Do you know how to prevent sensitive data from leaking outside of your Microsoft 365 organization? It's all about DLP or data loss prevention, and we're gonna talk about it right now. So what is data loss prevention or DLP? Well, let's start with the basics. It's something that helps organizations detect and prevent the unintentional or malicious sharing of sensitive information. And DLP works across Exchange Online for emails, SharePoint Online and OneDrive for documents, Microsoft Teams for chat messages, and endpoint devices such as Windows 10 and 11. There are more workloads as well, but these are the core ones. And DLP policies use rules to monitor content and take actions like blocking, warning, or auditing when sensitive data is detected. This helps organizations stay compliant and avoid costly data breaches. So before you create a DLP policy, you need to design it based on your own organization's requirements. Here's how. You need to identify sensitive data types. So this is what kind of information needs protection. Examples include credit card numbers, health records, or intellectual property. You need to understand business processes. Where does the sensitive data flow within your organization? Who needs access? How is data shared internally and externally? You'll need to assess your compliance needs. Are there any regulations you need to consider like GDPR, NIST 2, HIPAA, or PCI DSS? Make sure you understand all that apply. You also need to consider engaging stakeholders. This is crucial. Work with legal, HR, and IT teams to ensure policies are practical and effective. And do balance protection and productivity. Avoid overblocking, which can hinder business operations. Start with monitoring and notifications and then move to enforcement as needed. Designing with these factors in mind ensures your DLP policies are both effective and user-friendly. Now let's walk through creating a DLP policy in the Microsoft Purview Compliance Portal. Go to Solutions, Data Loss Prevention, and Policies. Click Create Policy and choose what type of data to protect. The first option is data stored in connected sources. This is the most commonly used one. It's either automatically like Microsoft 365 data sources or manually like managed devices. This one here, data in browser and network activity is a newer option and is to protect data in cloud apps as it's actively being used in browser and network activities. We will select the top one and click on next. Now you can choose a template such as enhanced, financial, medical and health, privacy, or make your own custom policy. Next, choose a template such as financial, medical, or custom. In this example, we'll do medical and health. Let's choose the Australia Health Records Act, HRIP Act, enhanced. Click next, and we can give a name to our DLP policy. You can either change it or accept the default name and description that has been provided for you. I will accept the defaults. Click Next. You can optionally assign admin units that you'd like to assign this policy to. Admin units are created in Microsoft Entra ID and restrict the policy to a specific set of users or groups, and your selections will affect the location options available to you in the next step. I will not select admin units for this example. Click Next. Now choose where to apply your policy. I will keep this one nice and simple. I will deselect on-premises repositories I'll also deselect in this example, Teams chat and channel messages. I will leave it at Exchange email, SharePoint sites, and OneDrive accounts. You can edit each of your selections to drill down further and include or exclude specific users, mailboxes, sites, or OneDrive accounts. Click Next. When defining the policy settings, you can choose to proceed with the basic set of rules or create and customize advanced DLP rules. I'll select the advanced option and click Next. And this takes you into this option here where you can see two options in the rules that we have to work with. We have a low volume of content detected and we have a high volume of content detected as well. The low volume of content detected will be instances of one to 10 and then the high volume of content will be instances 10 and upwards. And you can tune the rules appropriately depending on this volume of content, going more aggressive and more restrictive with the higher volume of content that is detected. Let's edit the high volume of content detected and see what it looks like. 
Here we can see what the rule is comprised of. We have a name already in there. We can put in an optional description as well. And what it's going to do, it's going to apply the policy to content that matches these conditions. So we have Australia tax file number, Australia medical account number, and Australia physical address. We have two of these set to high confidence and one is set to medium confidence. And you can drop down and change the confidence levels here. We can see the instance count here with this being the higher volume of content rule. We have an instance count of 10 to any. The lower volume of content rule would be one to nine. We also have an additional condition. We have group names selected there, sensitive info types, all full names, medium confidence and 10 to any. And we could add more sensitive types in here if we wish to. And you recall that we covered sensitive information types in an earlier video in this series. So do go back and check that out if you've not already watched it, because it's very relevant to DLP. Equally, there are medical terms and conditions, sensitive info types baked in. And then we proceed down to the last condition here, which is the content is shared from Microsoft 365 with people outside of my organization. You can optionally change that to only people with inside the organization. You can go ahead and add further conditions such as document could not be scanned, did not complete scanning, and so on. You can also add exceptions where the rule won't be applied based on the content containing certain criteria and other examples here that you can see. As we move down, we can then choose what actions we are going to apply if the rule is matched. In this example, we can see that restrict access or encrypt the content in Microsoft 365 locations is set to block users from receiving email or accessing shared SharePoint, OneDrive and Teams files and Fabric and Power BI items. We can choose to block everyone or only people outside of your organization. And in this instance, only people outside the organization has been selected. We can add other actions here if we wish to. We can start a Power Automate workflow based on the policy as well. Next, we come to user notifications and these are toggled on by default, but can be turned off as well and configured as you need them to be. You can choose to notify the user who sent, shared, or last modified the content or notify these specific people and check the boxes as needed. And you can add or remove users as you want. You can attach matching email messages to the notification. This applies only to Exchange, of course. And users will receive a policy tip when DLP is applicable to them. And you can customize this tip and the content in it. You can also choose to show the policy tip as a dialogue for the end user before sending, again available only for Exchange workloads. You can provide a compliance URL for the end user to learn more about your organization's policies, available for Exchange workload only, and once again. You can also enable user overrides to allow overrides from Microsoft 365 files and fabric items, and this will allow users to override policy restrictions in Fabric, Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams. So you can toggle that on if you want. If you are going to enable user overrides, you will want to consider these options here to require the user to enter a business justification for overriding the policy, override the rule automatically if they report it as a false positive, and require the end user to explicitly acknowledge the override, available again for exchange workload only. Then we move to incident reports, and we can choose here the severity level in admin alerts and reports, whether that be high, low, or medium. We can choose to send an alert to admins when a rule match occurs, toggle that on and off as needed, and send email alerts to additional or optional people by clicking on add or remove users. You can choose to send an alert every time an activity matches the rule or send an alert when the volume of matched activities reaches a particular threshold. And you can choose to use incident reports to notify you when a policy match occurs. You can toggle this on or off and send the notifications to the site admin and optional additional users. As we come to the end of the rule page, we have some final checkbox options where all incident reports include information about the item that was matched, where the match occurred, and the rules and policies it triggered. And you can also include the following information in the report. You can choose the name of the person who last modified the content, the types of sensitive content that matched the rule, the rule's severity level, 
the content that matched the rule, including the surrounding text, and the item containing the content that matched the rule. Be careful which of these you select, because whoever gets th these notifications based on this is going to be able to see all of these things. So think carefully about that audience. There are some additional options here at the bottom. If there's a match for this rule, you can stop processing additional DLP policies and rules, and you can evaluate rule per component, email body, and each individual attachment will be considered an individual entity for rule evaluation. So you can toggle that on and off as needed. You can also choose to set the order in which this rule will be selected for evaluation and change that as needed. Go ahead and click on save when you're happy with your rule configuration and click on next. Next, we choose the policy mode and it's extremely desirable to test any DLP policy before turning it on to verify if it needs improvement or if it meets all of your objectives. If you turn the policy on right away, you can edit it later and safely test those changes in simulation mode. So simulation mode is the first option. And what this is going to do is show you the items that match the policy's conditions to help you evaluate its impact. Your data won't be affected. The policy stays off while in simulation mode. You can also choose to show policy tips to users while in simulation mode. Additionally, you can choose to turn the policy on if it's not edited within 15 days of the simulation. There are two other options here. You can turn the policy on immediately or leave the policy turned off. Never go for turn the policy on immediately. Always either leave it turned off until you are ready to start simulating it or run the policy in simulation mode. Click on next and you can review and finish when you are happy with the policy details that you have set up are correct. It's giving some location suggestions here. Consider adding teams as a location to protect the additional sharing of sensitive info in teams. And this is why I deliberately left teams out of the selections earlier on to show you that it will recommend this to you at this stage. So we can update the locations if we want. I'll not do it here, but just to show you that that is a possibility. Let's click on submit. And after a few seconds, we can see the new policy is created. View the other recommended tasks and proceed as necessary, and then click on done. If we scroll to the bottom of our DLP list, we can see our new Australia Health Records Act DLP policy has been created. It has a priority in the list of 17, and we can see the mode is in simulation with notifications. The sync is in progress, and it was last modified on this particular date. Clicking into the policy enables us to see the overview and policy sync status, and we can view the simulation. If we click on the simulation, it takes us in, and we will get a simulation overview, items for review, and alerts, and we can download a report, edit the policy from here, even delete the policy from here, or restart the simulation. But of course, do be mindful that the simulation is going to need a few days to complete before you can either turn it on or if you configured the policy to auto turn it on after the simulation, then it will do that too. So some best practices for DLP for you to consider. One, start with built-in templates, then customize. Two, use test mode before enforcement or simulation mode more accurately. Three, combine DLP with sensitivity labels for layered protection. And you can choose to apply sensitivity labels from within your DLP policy rules. And number four, regularly review and update your policies. To recap, DLP policies prevent data leaks across Microsoft 365. Design your policies based on your organization's data, processes, and compliance needs. Create and manage policies using templates or custom rules and test and tune before enforcing. DLP is one of the core features of Microsoft Purview, and it is crucial to any organization who want to protect their sensitive data in Microsoft 365 and prevent that data from being lost or leaked, etc. Do look into it very, very diligently. And we're not done with DLP yet. I'll be back in another video very, very soon where we'll look into some of the more advanced options within DLP. If you've enjoyed the video, do give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe and the notifications bell as well. And do take care, stay safe, travel well. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.